Sharing this story is not something that I should be ashamed. At first I kept it to myself. First it all started when I was motivated by my colleagues to join the dating site called POF, Plenty of Fish. My first thought was I got nothing to lose for it's all virtual friendship and if there's something interesting about the person it's a matter of choice or free will. I have chronic insomnia. This would help me kill my time. I started on October 14th of 2019. And at first it was a little bit interesting for there's a lot of my inbox, a lot of mail that comes in in a day. It's astonishing to receive 103 messages and I know something is fishy. I've decided to retract my membership for two months because I felt uncomfortable. But my friend had been in a relationship with her boyfriend for six months and they have a beautiful baby girl. In my profile, I wrote down that I'm a banker for six years and I worked for 34 years in the medical profession. I'm 63 years old and I've been free from a relationship for 28 years. I have two adult kids of 45 and 28 at the time. In December of 2019, there was a doctor who sent me a message. He looks young, but he wrote down he was 61 years old, but I know that's not his right age just by looking at his jawline. We texted first thing and he asked was his age. He then said he was 52 years old. For I told him that I'm not looking for a son. If my daughter is older than you and my son, you better go somewhere else. For I won't go for it. He said that age is just a number and I don't look like I'm 60. I asked him how did he get in my profile. He said POF had matched us due to our medical background and personality maybe. He asked me if that's really my age or did I just lie. I said, no, that's my real age. I'm a bank officer for six years and shifted from being a nurse for 34. He seems not a talker, but also very intelligent. He speaks little, but when he was very direct and to the point and very literal, just like a doctor. He told me his name without hesitation, but his family name was Italian sounding. He started calling night and day. He call when he's at work, when he's less busy. The second week we planned to meet after the 28th of December. Then before he came, he started talking about some things that he was afraid to tell me and so ashamed. He showed me a copy of his bank statement that it had been hacked and it was frozen for up to two weeks. I told him I worked in the bank before and they will allow you to get some cash out even if the bank account is under investigation. However, I let him continue his concern that he has no cash to meet me, but his friend's accountant would send him 2K through Western Union. I suggested that we should postpone until his bank issue gets resolved, but he insisted that he only needed a $100 gift card of Sephora. I said, what does Sephora have to do with it? It's a makeup gift card. That itself, if I was already turned off my antenna and made me stand up in full alert, but he said he will use it as a GPS on his way. So since he insisted, I went to Safeway in an hour and a half. He said he ran out and he doesn't know his way and he needs it to add more time. So another $200. Finally, he said it's like an hour more he will be there. We were supposed to meet in the park, but since it's already dark because it's winter and I'm so dead tired, I worked 12 hour day, Monday through Friday, 9 to 9. That Friday I took off early so I could pick him up and let him follow him to his hotel. When he called, it was almost 8 p.m. and I'm getting weary and tired. I'm also chickening out for it's late and I'm sleepy. So I told him to go back to Reading. He said, why? I'm almost there. But I said, it's late and I can't entertain you. So he went back. There's five more attempts at meeting and there's always a financial involvement on seeing each other. I don't like this idea, for I want to meet him and not involve my wallet. He's the man, he should know better than that. Again, I told him, you're a doctor, what's going on with you? He said, doctors are human, we also have problems. I told him, I do understand, but this is getting obvious, this is not normal. There was a time that he said that he doesn't know... I can blast on him while people respect him. I said, you can blast. I'm trying to ask a question with no logic to it. The cause didn't justify the means. I'm very skeptical and a cynical person, and I'm a realist. All I want is transparency. After three months of knowing him, I showed his picture to a classmate back home, and she said he looks familiar. And she gets back to me that he's a celebrity. 
So I confronted him, not because I'm a troublemaker or a green-eyed monster, nothing on that. For me, I have the right to know his status as a public figure, not because I want him. And I told him that. At least I could have a choice to do what's right or not. For what I said is that no celebrity will be drifting into my WhatsApp or other apps. His answer was that he didn't tell me because he met someone before and his person did not take okay. He kept badgering him on his social media and his private life. Ever since it mounted up, I don't have a trust issue, but when someone lies about his life, that is a red flag. And using cards is another big one. He said to me, why are you not human? That I can't be in love with you? We're benefactors to each other. I know that you're the person that I want. I want someone who would just understand life in me and not just because of my status. He also went to the hospital, but the security won't let them in even though he's a doctor. The last time we planned to meet, he left late. We talked, but he was flying to New York City to have his eye cured, which I know was baloney. Now the plan we had was when we retire in two years, either in New York, and all of a sudden, he's going to be going to the Ukraine for his family is from there and stranded. And also, the standard of living is affordable. He retired after 22 years of working, and he's planning to open a clinic there so both of us could work. He went there to buy a house in order to migrate. But deep inside me, I still believe that it's too good to be true story. There might be, but I'm a realist. I based all things in reality, not in words, but action. He got stranded there for his love for me was over the budget. He bought a car and a house, so when I go there with his aunt, I won't be stressful living. All I did was use my brain to analyze. Why planning for someone you didn't meet at all? We did video chat. I let him write and compare his handwriting on the videos. All are similar. But again, he kept saying that love is in the heart. If you see me, you'll be surprised that I am who I am. And you'll need to apologize for all the insults you said to me that I'm a scammer. You have insulted my intelligence for you know well enough that I love you so much. Love is a risk. So many things he does before. He wants me to open a cash app, Bitcoin, other bank account, but I don't want to use it for I know nothing about it. He was a scammer and he lives to use third parties or maybe his uncle or whatsoever, only God knows. There are times I would believe his stories, but every time I noticed that he can't get what he wants quickly, he would give me an ultimatum. He called me a liar, greedy of my money. I told him, if I have money, I'm not obligated to give it to you unless I see you in person or over my dead body. If you're really a doctor, I'll ask for an apology. But to let you know I'm not stupid, I'm just too gullible, kind, generous, and selfless, vulnerable, if you take advantage of it. He said that when I go back to the States, I will calculate all of your money that you have sent out for help. But if you realize that you lied to me already, you will never find a man like me who is patient and understanding. What a sick mind impersonating someone. If it is him, which I doubt. And all the fakes and the fake birth certificate, his work ID, that's a sign of a deceiver. He accepts finally that I really want proof, but he can't send his real one from also a stranger, even though we were together for two years and four months of monkey business. He assured me that he will show me everything when we meet in California. Good thing I didn't go to the Ukraine, or else the war in Armageddon has begun. The emotional stress is overbearing, not only the money, but he said he would pay me back when he comes to the States, by mail or in person, but he said he is a very condescending creep that I will lose the best man of my life instead of me having a good life with him, I turned it down. He's trying to guilt trip me. One thing I noticed about this scumbag, they play with manipulation, heartstrings, brainwashing, grooming, gaslighting, humiliation, and demeaning you. As soon as you hit the years and talking BS, you're like an addict to certain drugs, dopamine and adrenaline, a sugar-coated donut, well-scripted. One thing I can say from my experience, don't let conversations prolong for more than they know about you. They study your weaknesses. This is not true, and once they ask for money, cards, Bitcoin, cash app, wire to a third party, just block them. Don't look back. For once they know you will do something for them, they will want more. Life is not easy. There's no love story that you fall in love instantly. But make sure you cut the crap out right away. If I'd known right away who he was, I don't fall in love with pictures. To see is to believe. If they try to let you feel bad, there's a point that I played with his emotions and hope that there is love there. For money is there to come. They have no empathy or compassion. 
Big Mind is a great pretender of a dictator. He would say, I, I'm a psychologist, and so are you. I know what you're doing. I would say back to him, yeah, you're delusional. For 4K is nothing for you. I reply, if it's nothing for me and you're a doctor, why don't you have that money? And you're driving a Lamborghini wearing a watch that cost you 15K in your photos instead of exploiting me for help and begging. I told him one time to raise some money through funds for your fans so you could get out of where you are. Why suffer? In my mind, you still believe that there's good people, but there's no excuse for these scammers to dupe anyone of all their savings. And we'd like to thank this lady for sharing her encounter. Keep in mind that there are victims from all over the world, and they have different encounters, different stories, and different ways of sharing their story. We appreciate your time in sharing your encounter with the fake doctor slash celebrity online. If you'd like to share your story, you can send us an email, scammingscammers at gmail.com, or inbox us on Facebook under the page Scamming Scammers Action. We will read your story, verify, and narrate it into a video. We can keep you anonymous and safe as always. Thanks for listening. Be safe.